In many ways, Biko reminds me of Nietzsche. He did not trust pity, and he might have thought forgiveness not really forgiven till the fire of truth has been brought into the consciousness of the one to be forgiven. Generosity without steel can be a weak thing, just as steel without generosity can be a cruel thing. This may be one of the real tragedy of Biko's death. The apartheid struggle needed its dual strand, its hard and its gentle, its sternness and its compassion, its fire and its water. With the murder of Biko, some tougher questions which would have been insisted upon might have found a more authentic advocate. The fact is that a nation cannot escape from itself and from all of its truths and all of its lies. If it lies, if it, if it lies, if its lies linger too long in the unspoken dialogue of a people, sooner or later they will lead to unpleasantness. Even though Biko be absent, the people in the shanty towns, the poor and the hungry, feel the shadow of those lies, feel the pointedness in their lives of the questions that Biko might be asking today. Great struggles tend to throw up great spirits. Great suffering tends to throw up great minds who refuse to accept the terms of that suffering. Something of the spirit of Prometheus breathed in the voice of people like Steve Biko. Voices who refused to accept the definition of his people by those who define it downward. Prometheus suffered his incarnation, incarceration on the great rock of Tartarus because he stole fire from the gods to give to humanity.